listen to the show and peep what these dudes bring If you didn't know it's an orange and blue thing Hope to win the championship in a few rings We're talking baseball It's an orange and blue thing Walk off if the game's tied like shoestrings It's a Mets podcast, orange and blue thing Beat the other team with defense in a few swings LFGM, it's an orange and blue thing What's up, Mets fans? That was awesome. I don't know if you guys could hear that because the mics are supposed to be off, but I don't know. Sometimes it picks things up. The second I hit the go live button, I said to to Julia, listen, we got to keep it tight because we need like a strict hour. We went over by 45 seconds last week and it took me like an extra app. The show's an hour. Yeah. It took me like an extra hour to edit it to download it and edit it down to get it to under an hour to get it on Instagram. Uh-huh. So the second hit live, the phone freaking <laughs> rings. I'm like, Liz, hey, get the phone. And the phone never rings in here. It's happened like twice. We and both to, times it's when, yeah. yeah. And we, it's like both times is when we were doing the show. We used to always unplug it. So whoever <laughs> called, I don't know if it was important, but of course it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> Um, I'm yelling to Lizzie in the back. Somebody yelling at you about Mercury Mets hats. Get the phone, get the phone. Yeah, probably another complaint. <laughs> Lizzie was fielding the angry emails on Friday. Poor Lizzie. So if you're not watching and you're and you're listening afterwards, I am wearing the Mercury Mets hat. The one of 72 made. I kept one for myself. <laughs> you're going to get shit for that. I'm, I'm, God, forbid, <laughs> God forbid the guy who you know, brought the hats back and designed them gets to keep one. Gets to keep one. Um, if you don't know what the Mercury Mets are, in 1999, the Mets and all of MLB did a turn ahead the clock promotion where they wore special uniforms for a day that would be a futuristic uniform. So mm-hmm. the Mets were the Mercury Mets for a day. Um, they couldn't fit Isringhausen on the back, so it was Izzy. <laughs> and um, they were supposed to be turning ahead the clock to 2021. And guess what? We are now in 2021. Oh. So I was like, you know what? Why don't we bring these hats back as a special thing? <laughs> we talked about Big this mistake. before. <laughs> well, no, it was a great, it was great, a great idea. Sold out. Yeah. But you know, people, when they see those uniforms, like they're disgusting. That's what I was saying. It's like, I have only ever seen people mentioning them talking about how disgusting and ugly they are and don't bring them Why back the or whatever. Do this yet? Yeah. So I thought it was very smart to start with a small number, see if there's actually interest. And then if there is get more. So on Friday, the rest of the world apparently did not. <laughs> I wasn't in on Friday, but you know, I'm still always locked in on my phone and, right. and all that stuff. So Lizzie pushed the button on that one on Friday. And when I hit refresh at 10 one, they were gone. It's insane. So one minute sellout of 72 hats, probably even sooner, probably 20 seconds. Right. Or so. And people get so angry because our site isn't set up like the Mets website, where if you purchase something, it sits in a cart until mm-hmm. you can go dilly dally with your credit yeah. card and so on and so forth. It doesn't hold it on purpose because what if you go in and you want to troll us and put six hats in and don't that's buy what I'm saying. I feel like most no websites cart. are like that. It's where first, it's, first, sir, yeah. first to check out. I feel like that's basic online shopping like 101. So that was the story. If you got one, maybe you want to like show off in the comments and say you got one. Uh, we are streaming live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope. Shout out to all you guys for watching live. We've got a couple hundred people in the chat here. Share the show. Share the show. <laughs> Definitely share the show. If you uh, post, it on your wall. post it on your wall, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on Twitter, <laughs> hit the little retweet button that puts you in the running for some free stuff. And I do apologize. I was going to we announce the free stuff last we week. We did. Okay. We um, did, but ignore me. I'm pulling a Julia where I didn't contact the winners yet. <laughs> so um, I'm sorry, but we, shots fired. We now, well, big apple trivia. Yeah. You're saying, you know, people were waiting like months. I know. I'm cards. sorry. Grandma needed surgery. I know. Sorry, grandma. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> um, but we will get you those really soon. I'm probably, it's on my to-do list for this afternoon. Uh, which I have a lot of stuff on my list this afternoon, which yeah. is great to actually have things to do, like being busy again. Yeah, I posted something yesterday. It was our seven-year anniversary of getting the kiosk in City Field. I saw that. I don't believe it. What was seven years ago? 2014. Oh my god! So well, that like, just blew my mind. <laughs> <it> was <laughs> 2014 like, was seven years ago. Yeah, it was like two days prior to opening day. Um, we uh, we took over the old New Era kiosk at city mm-hmm. field it was in the same location we right. just never moved and they were moving to i guess they have a store now in the left field area okay so it was just sitting there like all right well the seven line just got this license why don't we bring them in and and test this out and now we are going to uh be there this year as well but unfortunately i don't know if you guys happen to check the um the uh safe at city website so mets.com if you type in safe at city it's like all the protocol stuff about welcoming fans back at the ballpark 
our kiosk is going to be there, but it's not going to be open on opening day. Aww. So it's there. It hasn't made us a dime in a year and a half, but it's still not going to be open. That's so sad. It's there. It's branded. It looks So great, are like none of the stores going to be open, I guess? If you scroll down, and I saw something very concerning here, which we have to get to in a second. Oh, God. Uh, number one, cashless transactions. Did you hear about that? You told me that last week. So no it, cash yeah. in the ballpark. You have to use cards, which is no big deal. It's I don't fine. cash anyway. Um, but when you scroll down to merchandise, it says a limited number of Mets team stores, as well as the amazing memorabilia will be open with reduced in-store capacity. So I think that means everything else that's like smaller, sure. like in the outfield, you know, us will, will be closed. Um, can't imagine like the fan fest section would be open. That's not going to be open yeah. it's in here as well. Um, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of stuff in here. If you guys are interested in checking it out, go to uh, safe at city or just type in safe at city and Google. But after the up. show, keep watching. Yeah. Watch the show first. <laughs> But uh, it says, you know, toilet sinks and soap dispensers are all touchless. Signage will be uh, everywhere, basically telling you guys what to do. Players will not be permitted to sign any autographs. Uh, for fan and player safety, a six to 12 foot buffer zone is put in place. Mm. So I guess like row one near the dugout yeah. will probably not. Be, I mean, they rarely close. do shit like that on opening day anyway, because they're so focused and no, busy. But like that's... The, the buffer zones. Yeah. You know, is like, that the whole season or just I is this just opening month day? To month, yeah. Probably, because right now, the way that they're working it is um, April games are this is the probably the rules for April. Maybe yeah. in May they'll change. But, you know, the whole fan fest area, like the dunk tank, all that stuff. Is yeah, closed. it's got to be. So, you know, they're, they're doing what they can. Family Sundays are closed. Mr. and Mrs. Met Dash on Sundays is, is not happening. This is so sad. But this is this is big right here. Oh, no. Do you see that part? Can you read it from now? I just see parking. and um... Okay, so parking. Parking lots will be open three hours prior to the game, which is pretty normal. Right. Lizzie's in the background here looking and listening. Ominously in the dark. <laughs> Yeah. The methods of payment will be cash and credit, you know, no, no cash. Or if you have Apple Pay or Google Pay, you can. Wait, you can use cash to pay for parking or no? No, no, no. Okay. Credit only. Got no, it. No cash. Uh, tailgating is not permitted at City Field. I figured. That's what I was telling you. I was like, I can't imagine they'll allow tailgates. But how are they going to do that? I... Like... If they see you loitering around your car, I'm sure they'll have a security guard going up and down each like stall, each so row. That, that sucks. That job sucks. But like, I can't imagine they'd allow that because it's just there's no way to police a whole parking lot of people who are tailgating and making sure that everybody is wearing masks. I mean, you're eating and drinking, you know, you're not right. going to be wearing right. a mask. So I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine they would be doing tailgates. I saw I forget what stadium, but, but know, another stadium like came out and said that a while ago. I think that may, they maybe always have that. And it just it's just they're rolling it over. They know they never promote tailgating. You're not supposed to drink in, in, in public. Sure, but I don't I don't know. I can't imagine that's that they would allow that. I don't during see these, there being these a way times. That they can police that. And I think that that line is always there, but I never noticed it until just now. I will say, I do think that's something that like, you know, to get approved to have games again, that's something that they had to put in there. How strongly they'll enforce it or really be able to enforce it, I guess is something else. But I would just say, you know, if you're, I wouldn't be setting up grills or DJ booths no, or things like that. that. Well, not just us, but like anyone. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes people set up like a boom box or something. I don't know what, what year so is it. this is but... another thing that I just noticed this morning. I have to cut you off. Yeah, that's fine. But I was going through this, you know, because the thing is, we, um, we usually get credentials for Drea and Jono. Yeah. And now we are getting credentials, but we can only do one. Oh. So since Drea has tickets through us, Drea is going to be fine. Okay. But I wanted to check like the backpack rule. Sure. Because if you remember, guys, you can't bring backpacks in. Yeah. So how is she going to get her camera in? But you can bring a drawstring. We'll figure it it's out. Insane. But Jono's going to get the credential because he doesn't have tickets with us. Mm -hmm. And um, Drea will get through with the tickets. But I was going through and look at this face face masks. All guests uh, two years or older will wear have to wear face masks uh, unless they're eating or drinking and has to cover your nose and mouth underneath that gaiters, bandanas and face coverings with an exhalation valve are not permitted. You know how many gaiters have been sold? You know, not through us. We sold some, too. But like. Right. Like the players wear the gator. Yeah. I mean, like you can't wear a gator. That's going to be an issue. Why? I don't know. I guess is it's, it just not technically scientifically not, as effective? I guess. But it says it has to cover your nose and mouth. Before that, it says co cover your nose and mouth. Underneath that, gators, bandanas, and face coverings with an exhalation valve. What's an exhalation valve? I don't know. I'm, I'm telling you, 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 you asked why, you know restaurants can have so many people in, but like an outdoor stadium can't have as many. This is why. Because 
you know how much fucking work it's going to be to enforce all of these rules and every single person that walks through the door. Exactly. This is why you can't have that many people and expect that these rules are actually going to get followed. So once again, I am begging everyone out there. If you want to go to the stadium, just follow the rules. If you don't want to follow the rules, continue watching from your couch like you have been and let the people willing to follow the rules go to the stadium. Maybe you could pick up the couch potato too. Yeah. We're going to be selling those soon. Seriously. Um, For all you guys watching and listening, uh, you know, maybe you have this on in the background, but you're watching live. Let us know where you're watching from in the comments. We'll pull some of you guys in there uh, into the stream. We are three days away from real life baseball. The Mets are playing their last spring training game. I think right now it's not televised. They're playing, I think, the Marlins for like the 18th million time. Um, So the countdown is on three days. I am wearing my jersey today. Love it. What we're doing, though, because every year we make a new jersey. This year we're not because Mm -hmm. last year is essentially a push. Yeah. So uh, people always ask, like, what's with the numbers? Why do you have a a 20 on your jersey? Uh Because it was for 2020. Uh... Um, But the weather on Thursday night, I don't know if you checked. It's going to be chilly. I'm obsessed with the weather apps, especially (laughs) because I ride so much and I want to see how the tracks That makes sense. I thought this was just like a hobby of yours. No, no, no. (laughs) Um, I think there was a player that once wanted to be a weatherman. I don't know who that was. Oh, that sounds so familiar. Some I don't know who it was, but somebody's like obsessed with the weather. I need to think about it. Ex-Met player. Yeah, I've heard this. I'll I'll, I'll look into it. (laughs) If anyone remembers, put it in the comments here. Um, We got we got uh, Aiden watching from South Carolina. We got Jim Bork down in Tampa. We got uh, someone Drexel 122 watching from Georgia. So shout out to you guys trying to fill in the map here. Uh, we got Tom in, uh, where's Tom? Tom in Rockaway. I see my mom's name. A bunch of people checking in. <laughs> I don't know what she's uh, saying. I just see her name. <laughs> Hi, mom. She said Keith. She oh. just wrote the word Keith. I think she thinks Keith wanted to be a weatherman. I think Hernandez? that's her guess, I guess. I think she's just guessing. No, I, think it was a I don't think player. she knows for sure. But it's, I mean, maybe. Anyway. Hi, mom. So. Uh, my race got canceled yesterday. I saw of, that. That sucks. The weather. So yeah. yeah, I've been kind of obsessed with the weather apps, but I did check for Thursday, which does not look ideal because they have a night game. I was like, did you write, you have I, just a piece of paper to write down the weather. I wrote down the weather <laughs> for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I got it all right here. So this is the latest for my weather app for Thursday. Uh, we have a computer in front of us. Yeah, you could have just I just figured up. write it down. It's easier than like pulling up a new website. You're so special. Thursday Go ahead. does not look good. I know. It looks the, cold. The Grom on the Hill, low around 30 degrees with winds from 10 is to this, 20 miles Is this in D.C.? In D.C. Wow. But you know why they always do like the day after opening day is always off yeah. to account for bad weather. They can play the next day. Oh, is that why? Yeah. I always, it's, it's just... not so everyone that was there can like nurse their hand. I know. I was like, what, what is the point <laughs> of this? It's such like, a, it's, you get like blue balls. You go to a right, game right, for right. a day and then there's no game the next day. So the, so the weather for Thursday night sucks. Friday, uh, when they don't have a game is sunny and 50 okay. Saturday is 61 and partly cloudy. They do have a game and Sunday is 72 and sunny. So Easter Sunday game Ooh, looks awesome down in DC. That's nice. If you happen to be going down there. I did ask yesterday. Uh, I didn't, I should have read the replies, but <laughs> who's going to be down there on Thursday night? Cause clearly I'm not going to be, yeah. but, um, the early forecast for 10 days from right now, which is the home opener mm-hmm. at city field. <laughs> Has a very opening day ish forecast, at least for uh, right now. It says mostly cloudy with showers during the day and a high of 58 degrees. I would take the 58. Yeah. But just, you know how the wind rips around in center field? Mm-hmm. No matter what the temperature is, it's supposed to be on, like, you know, if you check your weather yeah. app, it's always like feels 10 degrees colder from the wind of the Flushing Bay, kind of ripping through center field. Really? I, yeah. you know what? You have I, no shade. I was going to say, because it's weird. I think it's different in every part of the outfield. The, okay. The left field corner, because when you're sitting, it's opposite. But the left field corner, I feel like, is the coldest, the windiest. I always feel like sitting in center field, I'm the warmest because day games, the sun is on you. So at least like you have the yeah, sun. You baked out there. Yeah. But I'm thinking like early early in the season when it's when it's chilly and not sunny, it feels so much colder out there. Yeah, I guess it's true. So someone chimed in in the comments here. Matt says that Mike Trout is a big weather nerd. <laughs> I don't know if that's what I heard about. I thought it was a Met player. Maybe I'm thinking about I BMX. Don't know. <laughs> this BMX. No, I feel like I've heard Weatherman from something and someone. There's also I doubt anyone's watching that watch that rides BMX, but it, <laughs> there's this guy. Uh, actually, I have his jersey hanging up in my <laughs> office. Chris Doyle. I think he wanted to be a weatherman. Anyway, that's the story. <laughs> we'll figure it that. out. <laughs> so as we've been doing, uh, yeah. Well, let's get to this. As we've been yeah. doing each week mm-hmm. of this month, we've been trying to highlight a different woman in baseball that made a big impact 
on uh, the sport and the Mets. And uh, first off, we had Shannon Ford. Mm -hmm. Then we had Disha on from Daily News. Last week, we talked about Joan Payson. Yes. And this week, we are going to talk about Bo Field. Please educate me. And if you don't know who Bo Field is, I think I'm a little too young. You are. She passed away in 2012. I did have some notes here. I don't know if I if I got rid of them. I hope I didn't. (laughs) But uh, there you go. Bofield passed away in 2012. She was an original season ticket member at Shea Stadium back, dating back to obviously the 1964. Oh, wow. And she had them at least until Shea Stadium was demolished. And in 2000, and, uh, actually in 1999, because mm-hmm. her seats were, I'll show you a clip here in a second. Her seats were the first seat, first possible seat right behind home plate. Oh you'd God. always see her rolling her arms and she always wore this like it wasn't straw. It was like a foam hat, like those old political hats. Like I the, love it. You know yeah, yeah. Uh, she wore one of those hats, and she was just like a big super fan. Like before I even knew what super fans were, right? You know, Cabloman, Pinman. You know, all these guys painting their faces and stuff. Yeah. She was just down there loving the Mets. She worked uh, at a diner for forty years. You're it- telling me she afforded season tickets behind home plate for that long, working at a diner. Yeah. She, well, she the put, times have changed. She put in her time. She worked <laughs> at the Arlington Diner when it first opened for 15 years. Wow. Then she worked at the Lindhurst Diner for 25 years, so 40 years in total. Lived, she lived down in uh, Kearney, New Jersey, originally from Chattanooga, Tennessee. But the, the cool thing is, for me, um, you know, there's certain instances when you're a kid and you go to a game, like mm-hmm. you remember like your first moment at a game. Yeah. I don't know if you remember yours. Um, I don't remember my first moment because I was there so often because my grandfather worked yeah. there. But what I do remember distinctly meeting her for the first time. I was probably like Amelia's age, like maybe. Oh, you did younger. meet her. Oh yeah. Wow. She was awesome. So not to brag here, but the way that it worked back then is we didn't need tickets to the game. Uh-huh. We would show up, go to grandpa's office, hang out. He ran the press gate. We'd yeah. walk right in the cops in the front knew who we were. Right. So we'd go hang out with him. And when he was done doing what he needed to do right in front of his office, because when you walked in the press gate, there was an office to the left. That was his office. Okay. Um, which is kind of crazy because it was like as close as it could be to like walking in. Yeah. And then right outside the office was the ramps. Wow. So he had a ramp that went up right behind, right out of his door that brought you right behind home plate. That's so sick. we were like minutes from his office to our seats. Right. He'd say something to someone and then they would just let us in. So we'd sit behind home plate for mm-hmm. free whenever we wanted. And you've always just been bougie. <laughs> <laughs> it's bougie it was from just a, birth. It was just a perk. I yeah. Don't know. No, so that's awesome. she was also in the section. Oh. So one day she's sitting down there. I don't know if I happened to walk down or she came up from maybe coming back from the bathroom, but she says, come on down, sit with me. Mm-hmm. So I went down and sat with that's her. That's so cool. Her, and she's doing the thing with her arms. And I'm like, wow, this is so awesome. What was the reason for, it was to distract the pitchers? She did it in, in 86. A lot of people were actually saying that like she had a hand in like the Mets winning the World <laughs> Series or distracting <laughs> the pitchers in game six. Oh, wow. So look at this clip I got here. Um. Let me see if I have it saved here. Yeah, I do. So check this out. Mm -hmm. This is, see her in the back right there? Yeah. This is before the first pitch of the at-bat with Mookie Wilson. With the wild pitch. And Bob Stanley. Yeah. (gasps) So I I rewatched it just now, um, you know, this morning. It was at least a 10-pitch at-bat. Mookie Mm -hmm. was fouling stuff off left and right. Right. It was a wild pitch that obviously tied the game, Mm -hmm. and then he had the slow roller up along first. But she's back there rolling her arms. So she's like giving the bad juju right away. Oh, I love it. Awesome. I don't know how many times I have seen the replay of that play, and I have never noticed her doing that. It, this is right before the first pitch. I don't know if she's doing it the well, entire I, time. I mean, I've seen the whole at bat. Like right, I've right, seen right. it before. I've never noticed. But that. now that you know, you're yeah, gonna, you're going to notice. I was going to say, know? I feel like you would notice someone doing that behind yeah. home plate, regardless. Yeah. I never did. That's um, so funny. Yeah. So she was awesome, and and it's the kind of thing like that. That kind of stuff to me like molds you into yeah. a fan, you know. Mm-hmm. Seeing that, and I remember my first time seeing someone ride a BMX bike. Like yeah. I was on vacation as a little kid. We're in Virginia Beach, and there was like um, um, like a, a performance or some kind of show on mm-hmm. the boardwalk. And I was like, "Wow, this is awesome! I want to do that." Yeah, you know. So it's the kind of thing where it's like I wanted to be this lady. And you want to be that? Cra- you kind of are that crazy <laughs> yeah. Mets fan. Yeah. Wow. So she was awesome. Um, there's a couple other things here. I love it. Check this photo out that I happened to find today. Um, so that's clearly the new Piazza club. So she was at the games when, you know, they moved over to city field. I don't yeah. know where her seats were, mm-hmm. but, but that's her in the Piazza club there. She's holding a, a I don't know if she's holding it or if that's photoshopped in, <laughs> but she was on the cover of the newspaper in 86 as well, wearing wow. that, that signature hat. And I'm, I'm almost positive. I came across her one day in McFadden's I'm almost <laughs> positive. 
<laughs> I'm almost positive. Oh, Bo is awesome where she was. May she rest in peace. Absolutely. Rest in peace. That's Bo. crazy. So awesome. I love it. Um, we did put up some stuff a few years ago. I don't know who wrote it. Maybe Nikki G Money. But we uh, remember Nikki G Money? Uh, that's no. his Twitter name. But, oh, OK. I was uh, like, who goes by that? He writes on the blog sometimes. Got it. And he puts together something on our site about like super fans. And she was like, clearly one of them. Yeah. But uh, do you have a moment? I, like, I remember also the fir my first foul ball. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even a foul. I was in that section. And yeah. you could kind of run down to the um, the Mets on deck circle and like the net was just off enough where you can kind of go around mm -hmm. and i'm almost positive it was bobby bonilla like a ball <laughs> rolled up and he like threw it up and i, and I called you it did get it as, so it's not really a foul ball but right I but got still a ball. do you have like a early memory that like stands out so it's funny is uh my family used to have i believe we had like a four ticket package like the sunday season tickets at chase stadium when i was young and i guess when i was born we never bumped it up to five so as long as humanly possible like and up until i was like eight years old my dad would carry me into the stadium i would scrunch up my legs pretend i was a baby so i could get in for oh, free too. i know literally that's what we would do We're like she was like oh you're getting too big for this but i remember so I, I was at chase stadium frequently as a child i was obsessed with mike piazza he was my favorite and there was like one game i was young and I was just like throwing a tantrum, not having it. And we're like, all right, my parents are like, all right, let's go. It was like the seventh inning, whatever. We left. And then we're listening on the radio, leaving Shea Stadium. And like right after we left, and Mike Piazza hit a foul ball like right to our empty seats. Oh, <laughs> like no. where we were sitting, it bounced off the seats. So that's, I'm, my brothers give me shit for that all the time. It's like, you could have had a Mike Piazza foul ball, yeah. but you had to be a bitch and make us leave the game. So whatever. But that is probably my earliest memory i guess okay. i didn't get the foul ball but it was hit to me so i forgot to pull this up when we were talking about Bo. but check this out mm -hmm. so in um in 2019 i happened to catch these kids behind home plate and they were doing the bow roll oh that's amazing that. so i said i don't know if these kids know well, they obviously they know or someone was telling them right loving these kids behind the plate paying homage to Bo field and they're rolling their hands oh that's so cool what do you think happened maybe like five minutes after this oh is this like this like something in the game you mean no, that happened something in the stands that happened like five minutes after this these kids are having a phenomenal i was probably the age of these kids oh my god wait i think i remember I this didn't they make them stop they made them stop that's so stupid Security i do remember this told, told these kids to stop having fun at the game i can't unbelievable I, I i'm sorry like i no shade to city field security i know so, so many great yeah. security guards yeah, there course. but i for whatever reason you know if you have like one of those like front row seat like whatever they don't let you do anything fun no, no. i'm not even kidding david wright's last game which we paid good money i mean we got the tickets early enough that we didn't have to pay a bajillion dollars, but they don't know that we could have paid a bajillion dollars to sit like on the field for David Wright's last game. And those seats, it's like in the, um, it's like the handicap section. So you're like a good level below everyone else sitting behind you. Uh -huh. And you know, David Wright is standing right in front of us. It's his last game. And we were like standing up cheering and we had signs, but we were holding them like below our face. So it wasn't over our heads. And even when you're standing, everyone behind you who was also standing, like could see security guards made us sit down. They were telling us to sit. People behind you can't see. And I asked them, like, can you all see? They're like, yeah, let them sit. Like, no, you need to sit. I'm like, I, I was like, if this wasn't yeah, a game where I would kill myself if I got kicked out, I'd be throwing a tantrum right now because that's ridiculous. Eyes on the sky, you know, telling them what to do. Yeah. It's like when I got kicked out of the game, it's like a sign, you know? But no, I could also tell that person was new because when I showed them the ticket, because it says like ADA, they're like, this isn't a section. I'm like, this is the section that you're in charge of. This yeah. is your section. I sat here last night. Yeah. Like, please ask somebody else. So they yeah, made somebody yeah, else come yeah. up. They're like, yeah, this is a section. It's like, oh, okay. So I'm like, I, I can't. I'm Most security guards at City Field are very good at their jobs. The one that just, goes out of their way to make sure the fans aren't having fun just please reconsider what your job is you're there to keep people safe you're not there to keep people from enjoying themselves right, there's right, a difference right, right, right. And, Especially and if like nothing's being offensive like those little kids were having a blast i know, you know? I, I can't that's so like what do you, you really think they're messing with the game they're really distracting the pitchers that much and if they are great <laughs> like let them do it go back and rewatch that mookie um mm -hmm. that mookie at bat the, speaking of like fans just doing kind of like whatever the fuck they want yeah after the wild pitch and the game was tied there were like streamers coming onto the field during the at bat <laughs> like if you look behind mookie there's like 
paper towel. It's like toilet paper on the ground. Oh, I love it. They scroll to the crowd and the, the cops are standing on the dugout. Yeah. People are already kind of like getting ready to run on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nuts. Oh. Speaking of running on the field, do you remember when um, after the no, did we talk about this? After the no hitter, that guy yes, was in the pileup because and Duda started punching him. In the I ribs. knew I didn't know that guy. So my we talk about this in the show. Maybe last year because my friend's dad is friends with him. His kid's first birthday was the next day. He missed his kid's first birthday party. Out? Yeah, because he was in Mets jail and he's banned from the stadium. Had to pay like a two thousand dollar fine or something and That's missed his kid's first birthday party. School? No way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a year older than me in high school. I don't know his name. We weren't friends or anything, but I remember seeing his face like the next day on uh -huh. some blog or website or something like this. Is the guy that got it. Right yeah, yeah. I was like, holy shit, that's the guy. That's in insane. Um. Anyway, I think it's worth it. That is, it, some things are worth yeah. it in life. And one thing that is definitely worth it is a bat mug from our friends from Dugout. Heck mugs. yes. Uh, we love them. We have them on here on the desks. We use the shot glasses or shot mugs and and the wine mugs and the season openers and everything else they got going on over on their website. So hop on over to dugoutmugs.com. They always have some great promotions running. And for this week and this week only, actually, I asked them if they can extend it until the end of uh, our opening day, yeah. which is on the 8th, obviously. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay. Awesome. So you go to their website, dugoutmugs.com, search for the collection Mets. They got the bat mugs. They got the wine mugs. They got the season openers. They got the, what are they called? Knob, Knob shots. shots. They got everything. The wind up. And you can take 35% off of all this stuff just Ooh. by using the code seven line, the number seven L I N E on their website, dugoutmugs.com. They do have something going on this Wednesday night. So if you go to their social media, um, they are doing like an opening night or preseason, like opening day mm -hmm. Eve show. Oh, cool. And they're bringing people in. I, I said I couldn't do it. I got something else going on on Wednesday night, but definitely follow Dugout Mugs. They're probably even- Is gonna, it like on Clubhouse? No, they're going to do like live, like Instagram. I oh, think. cool. Not Instagram. I think they're going to do it on Twitter and Facebook. I should have asked them prior, but yeah. definitely if you follow their accounts, you'll be able to see it. So follow them, check their stuff out. We love them. They've been great, great, great <laughs> friends and partners of the Seven Line for over a year now. Great business down in Florida. Check them out. Dugoutmugs.com. Promo code 7 line 7 l i n e 35% off. Did you see that Mike Piazza one on there? No. I think we have one back there. Is that a Piazza one? The oh, one? Yeah. Is it, it is? So I'm going yeah, to grab I'm going to knock everything down. Nah, whatever. Grab it. So this one's really cool. It looks it looks like a well, obviously it is a baseball bat. Yeah. But this logo here, the oval says Dugout Mugs and has his signature on there with his name. So that's really cool. That's awesome. They got like signature mugs and stuff like that. So speaking of Mike Piazza. What are you about to hit me with right now? Mike Piazza is confirmed to be on the show next week. Why did you boo? I hit the wrong one. <laughs> so Mike Piazza is going to be on the show next week. Oh, God. I got to mentally prepare. You know what's crazy? Well, you know what? I thought I know you were very busy yesterday. We don't have to talk about what, yeah. what you were doing. but. Um, I was pretty, I had a feeling he was going to confirm yesterday mm -hmm. and I was going to have to lay it on you like either last night or this morning. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, you know, let's get some notes together. Yeah. I going to be on the show, but, um, Thank God. he actually hit me back up this morning and said, you know, he actually apologized. Like, I'm sorry. Uh, the man's a saint. Thanks for your patience. But I, can we do next Monday instead? I'm like, dude. Sure. Hall of Famer Mike Piazza. That's okay. Hall of Fame. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, <laughs> yeah, you could be on, we can have the show at midnight. If yeah. You want so oh my god mike piazza is gonna be on next week and the cool thing about it is like wow. i know like wayne and and um and uh steve cohen are doing something tonight mm -hmm. um on i think youtube oh yes i heard about like that q a mm -hmm. but that's let's be honest that's taped like they're gonna put it on youtube and yeah. it's, it's it's probably already done right this is gonna be live so the way we're gonna run it is we'll have our our questions and the same kind of like we did with these show where yeah. we'll, we'll go to the bullpen we'll go to the audience here and ask them if they have any questions so uh -huh. the same way we're looking at the comments here Next week, if you watch live and you want to ask Mike something, uh, uh, fire away in the comments. And the cool thing is, too, he'll be able to see who's asking it. So uh, let's say we get a question from Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo's name and, and face and his comment will be on the screen. Mike oh will be gosh. able to read it. So not only are you asking Mike a question, he's actually seeing He could see your face, your name. So like an anonymous. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, anonymous person there oh on the gosh. internet. You know? So that's going to be really cool. That's so exciting. Um, what do they call them on there? They call them trollers. <laughs> so uh, we'll no trolling, Mike Piazza. <laughs> no trollers next week, please, on the show. 
it's going to be a fun one. Mike was on actually two or three seasons ago. Like uh -huh. we talked about that yeah, when yeah. I was doing the test in my basement. So <laughs> it'll be cool to catch up with him again. Oh, my God. It came out yesterday. Did you see? Um, I know you're busy. But, I was not uh, on the internet yesterday. Puma tweeted out. Uh, this is a tweet straight from, from Puma. Hearing that Mike Piazza will increase his presence with the Mets, taking on some community relations and marketing responsibilities, plus building relationships with players. Oh, I love Piazza that. Piazza was in camp for a few days as a guest instructor. So... You know, Cohen's doing doing the right things, bringing guys I back in the mix. Especially, how could you not want to give Mike more Mike Piazza responsibilities? Yeah, which I don't I don't know how much of a role he might have because I think he still lives in Italy mm -hmm. for the majority of his time. I know his kids go to school there. Yeah. Um. So whatever, having him in the mix. I know David Wright's in the mix, but how much is he in the well, mix? Well, I mean, I also think you know Mike Piazza's kids are a little older now. Um, David's got three babies basically. So I feel like, you know, maybe we'd see more of David in a few years but right now. He's like, that's what Mike Piazza did. He was a dad for a few years, a little less involved at some other things. So, um, no, I think that's awesome. I'm so excited. I need to like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to like process this. Yeah. I didn't know this for everyone watching. I wasn't, I just saw on the, like the little run said Mike Piazza announcement. I didn't know what was coming. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm very excited. Well, that's the story. So next Monday, the show will be at noon. We'll probably have Mike on like right after we start, so we don't have to rush him. Yeah. Um, his his conference or whatever you want to call it, his press mm -hmm. conference with the media last week was awesome. Um, I know we we talked a little bit about it last week on the show, but just having him like so can he's so like with that, I feel like I feel like he's a little bit more has his guard up because he's yeah. doing something strictly with the Mets through the Mets social and with mm -hmm. us even. A few years ago, he was so like just like a person laid back, yeah, kind of like how David Wright was, you yeah, know? like I'll oh, stay as long as you want, yeah, yeah, about, um, Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, <laughs> and you know, GQ yeah. and all this random His stuff. dog so situation. It'll be cool to have Mike on. No, that's show. so cool. I always wonder because, like, I always see now, um, like, you know, like now, if you had if you could ask him a question, what would it be? Like, what a I don't put you on the spot, but next week we got to get prepared. Oh my god, um, I don't know necessarily. I'd have to think of like a question, like the one question I would ask Mike Piazza. But like my mom was telling me because we were talking about it last week, I was like, oh my god, you have to tell him. I mean, I don't know if I should like blow this story now, but I did go. My whole family went specifically to San Diego to see him with the Padres in 2006 for me. Um, and it did not go according to plan. So I feel like maybe I'd want to tell him about that. But um, I have to think of a question. Because I it's another thing, like like with David, it was like, I want to ask him a question that, you know, I've heard every interview he's ever done. I don't want to ask him the same question everybody else has asked. So yeah. I would want to think about it a little bit, what he hasn't been asked before. Well, you saw a couple of weeks ago, we posted the like the flashback video of when he went after Moda, right? Like the spring training. Yeah, ball. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I... I mean, we, I think we talked about it last time, too. Like, mm -hmm. I wish he had that same intensity against Clemens, but whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so we are three days away from opening night. So you guys definitely want to go ahead and get prepared with some Coors Lights. Mm -hmm. We have some big stuff planned with them. And I, I, I know I keep saying it, like, every week. Like, oh, we're going to let you right. know what's going on soon. But um, if you are going to be sitting with the Seven Line Army on opening day, um, I should have some details about some fun stuff with Coors Light hammered up, I hope, today, Ooh. if not tomorrow, and I will let everyone know. Um, but in the meantime, go to uh, go over to Drizzly. Go to drizzly.com. You can pick up Coors Lights, have them delivered straight to your house. You could also use Instacart, which I know you use. Love Instacart. Um, I just happen to type in 41 Seaver Way here. You know, a pretty popular place. You might want to attend there pretty soon. But you can actually add your stuff to your cart, get your beers delivered to your house or wherever you wherever you may be. I don't think you can get it delivered to the parking lot, but uh, get it delivered to your house and and stock up, put them on some ice, and and uh, get ready for opening night on either Wednesday night. Maybe you're going down there. I don't know if you are, but definitely bring some Coors Lights, get stocked up and loaded up for the beginning of baseball. And you know, um, obviously celebrate responsibly. Coors Press Brewing reset Company. and chill. Coors Brewing <laughs> Company, Golden, Colorado. You know, it's it's uh, it's great what they're doing, and and we have a lot of really big things planned, and I really I can't wait. It's like Amelia does this thing where when she's full, she goes, "Oh, I'm beep beep beep." beep. I'm all like, "I'm too full. I can't eat more." I'm beep beep. I'm yeah. so like ready to just like explain beep, 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 what's beep. going on. Yeah. And we can't yet. I haven't gotten the green light. I thought we did, and I had to cross it out oh. on our on our little sheet here. So shout out to Coors Light. They're awesome. And uh, I'm really excited to work with them. So um, raviolis. <laughs> raviolis. Love raviolis. And chicken parm. If you didn't see the tweets, because I know you were busy. I did. No, this I saw. Okay. So this you did say. Mm -hmm. You're not. This isn't breaking news. I see you. raviolis in my eyes. They're like, I want to know what that's about. So. so Steve Cohen on Friday put something on Twitter like, um, if you 
give me some advice or some recommendations. What? Yeah, like what do you what do you think I should sign Lindor for? I'm gonna crowdsource. Like, what do you think Lindor would take as a as an extension there? Mm -hmm. And it's like if you're tweeting like that, I feel like it's gonna get done. It has to. Yeah. Otherwise, you're that's like he thought like he was getting it bad after GameStop. If you start putting stuff out like that, and then on Thursday, (laughs) and then don't do it. Yeah. Before eight o'clock, I don't know what the deadline is. The game's at seven, I think. uh, ESPN. Boo. Um, (laughs) On Thursday. But if it's not done by Thursday, he's going to hear it. Yeah. Uh, you know what? And I think um, who did I say? Tim Healy was tweeting about this. Like He was going back and forth with somebody. He's like, he doesn't necessarily believe that the opening day deadline is so strict that it has to be opening night. Like if they're in talks and they're close and it doesn't necessarily get done by opening night, it's not like Lindor's going to be like, all right, cutting it off. It's not done by opening night. I know. Getting it done till October. Well, no, no, no. That's or what November. he's saying is he doesn't he doesn't think that's true. It's like if they're close and they're talking about it and it's not, you know, he's not just going to be like, OK, I'm cutting it. Like if they're right there and it takes like a day or two later, like he thinks that's more likely than like, you know, if it's 7 p.m. on opening night and it hasn't happened, it's for sure not going to happen. So well, I mean, honestly, this guy meaning, you know, not to say this guy. Yes. Or- uh, Mr. Cohen there, but mm-hmm. you know, he drops millions upon millions and millions of dollars on like random art, art. Things that he really loves. Yes. And he loves the Mets. So I feel like if it's coming down between like $30 million here or there, which I feel to like it's us just gonna get is done. like ridiculous money, but for them, it's like nothing. It's like I think it's going to happen. Change. So yeah, um, I agree. That's a story. But so last night it came out, someone wrote, I think it was um, Jeff Passan, a pass and I always say yes. wrong mm-hmm. that a source confirmed that Lindor and, and uh, Steve Cohen were out to dinner on Saturday night. And then Steve confirmed it, that they went out and he had the raviolis and Lindor had the chicken parm. Uh So if you were going out with um, someone who was trying to wine and dine you, Mm -hmm. would you pick the chicken parm? Um, I would probably spring for the veal parm. Um, though, honestly, I, I really would feel parm is like my go-to, but I honestly, I usually opt for chicken parm actually, because my mom makes the best veal parm in the world. And whenever I get at a restaurant, I'm disappointed. So if I was trying to be with somebody that like, I didn't want them to see disappointment on my face, I might go for the chicken parm. Cause who got the so, salmon? Was that, was I was going to say Granderson? Reggie of Granderson when, when him and Sandy Olsen went out to dinner, like, oh yeah, I went out to dinner with Granderson last night. He got the salmon. It was like the same energy, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they got it done. So I feel like if they're sharing what they ate, a deal is going to get done. Granderson's the man. I, I miss him. Love Curtis Granderson. I hope you land. I think that when we talked, he was on the show. It's just such a good egg. We talked about uh, broadcasting. I think he said he would like to get into it, or maybe he didn't. He would be, be so good. For it. He'd be perfect. Um, but I was listening to Moose and Maggie prior, you know, earlier today, mm-hmm. and they were saying if they went, out, I was kind of asking you the same question uh-huh. they did, and they said they would have, they would order like the lobster. Lobster <laughs> was on the menu. They would just get like whatever I'm the most big on lobster. Is. But it I guess be peasant food. You know, lobsters know. were like bottom of the barrel. Like, it wasn't yeah, but- this like. You know what? I I don't know. I'm trying to think like, I don't know. It's like Lindor has grew up in Florida and like my, he's probably had a lot of seafood his whole life. Maybe he wanted some Italian chicken parm. Maybe he wanted to be a little more New York. I don't know. I don't know. He he was talking about pizza. Yeah. Maybe he's on an Italian kick. Let it, you know what? Whatever gets it done. That's fine. Chicken parm would seal the deal for me. (laughs) I did. uh, I did put a poll up here. Let me try to find it really quick while we talk for a second. Um, Sorry, I should have had this ready to go. No, that's but fine. But I put up the a Twitter poll the other day asking the fans what they thought about an extension. And I think the poll just ended. Let me, let me just let me double check and see what it ended at because I actually added Steve Cohen this morning <laughs> to see what he thought. Um, here we go. So I uh, put this up a few days ago, let it run until I think like an hour ago or mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, who do you think the Mets will extend before opening day? Uh, option one, Conforto. Option two, Lindor. Both or neither. Lindor was the winner with 51.3%. Both said 27.9%, and neither said 16.3%. So, hmm. um, right there, it's uh, what 50, 60, 70, a little over 80% of fans think either both Lindor or Conforto. 163 say they're going to do nothing, which I don't. I mean, I'm probably on the side with them. I don't believe they'll do nothing either. Yeah. But we, we, we haven't really been hearing. I just started there for a second. We <laughs> haven't been hearing much about a Conforto extension at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I know. There's really been no talk about it other than like fans are like, you should probably do this. <laughs> but like, well, they know, haven't really talked been, about it. He's been kind of, um, you know, 
not downplaying it, but almost saying too, like that's between me, my family, my agent. Like yeah. I, I didn't want to talk about yeah, it yeah, as yeah. publicly. He's a Boris client, right? Yeah. Yeah. So which there you, you go. know <laughs> makes you a little scared. <laughs> yeah. Uh I did put up a wins poll as well. Do you want to get into that? Do you have a prediction here on a win <sighs> win total here? I do you want my honest opinion? Well, of course. We're all about honesty <laughs> here. So uh this was on the orange and blue thing, uh Twitter account, which you should be following if you're not already. It's orange blue thing, no end, it's too long. Uh, Mets wins in 2020, 2021. I wrote 500 or under is just silly. So that was not an option. Right. 82 to 86, 87 to 92, 93 to 97 or 98 plus. So, and you could see my vote there because I put 98 plus. Okay. You can see my little check. Okay. There. So here's my thing is that I feel like every year since 2015, every year going into the season, we've believed the Mets are going to be right in it. They're going to be contenders. They could win a lot of games this year. Uh-huh. And it's pretty much been disappointment every single year. And it's not that I think they're going to disappoint me this year. It's that I don't want to get my expectations too high Uh because I feel right now getting Lindor, getting a new owner, we're all very excited and we all just feel like, you know, there's no option. They have to be the best team in the National League because all these things happened, which I think is very possible. But maybe it's the superstition side of me that is just I am not ready to think that because I feel like I will only know pain if I do. Because as we know, so much has to go right for a team to be good. You can win the offseason, but if everyone gets hurt the first month of the season, if three of your best players underperform, you never know. And I'm not trying to be a pessimist. I'm not trying to bring everybody down. Right. Um, I just don't want to be disappointed. Um, I don't. What's the first option? 82 to 86. So they, That wouldn't even be a playoff berth. Uh, yeah. You know, well, I I take it back because now they're doing the extra, you know, the extra Mm -hmm. spot. So, yeah, it would be. Here's my thing. Last year, you had to just be a 500 team. I know. So, like, I'm wrong about everything. So, I (laughs) am going to say I voted for that option because I'm like, I want to be wrong. (laughs) It's like it has to be higher than this. Um, I don't totally believe that it'll be that low. I really don't. But I'm just I'm cautiously optimistic about this season. I think part of me is also afraid to get too excited because if I start thinking about how the Mets are going to be in the playoffs, the anxiety that will be through the roof for me, knowing there's a 0% chance I'm going to get to all those games like we did in 2015, is just going to make me not enjoy it as much. Right, right, right. So I'm just taking it day by day. I am excited for baseball to be back, but I am going to wait and see what actually happens. Well, I was on, uh, we got to believe, uh, KFC and Clem mm-hmm. on, on Barstool. And I was driving and it, I was brought in. I don't know if I told you about this. the clubhouse, right? Did we talk about this on the show? I think publicly, you told. Privately? Yeah. I don't know. Who knows anymore? <laughs> but I was on their show, not even realizing I was going to be a guest on it. Yeah. They pulled me in through clubhouse and they asked me and I said 104 <laughs> just because I was like, I was driving in a snowstorm. You're such a shill. Like 104. <laughs> and I know Clem uh, said 96. So he's in the 96ers. I think that's okay. what they're calling their club. The 96ers there. Oh, I, I did see that. But uh, anyway, the if you're not listening and you didn't see the poll here. I mean, if you're not watching and you're you're more of a listener of mm-hmm. the show, the poll, the winner of the poll says Slightly. That 87 to 92 uh just edged out 93 to 97. So 87 to 92 was the winner with nine uh 43.6%. Mm. 93 to 97 said 41.8%. So pretty much uh over 80% of the fans believe between 87 and 97. I was going to say a huge like range. Yeah. Games more people think that they will win 96 or 97 games plus than what is it? 82 yeah. to 87. Oh, yeah. 82 to 86 has the lowest. Yeah. 5.7%. I think it was just people like me who were like, we need to do this for the better of the team. How about this? <laughs> more people believe the Mets will win 98 or more games than 82 to 86. Isn't that what I just said? Is it, Did you? I think I just said that. Damn. <laughs> Maybe I'm just thinking in my head of like what I'm going to say next. I'm it's just... also I've been saying the numbers wrong because I can't see what they specifically yeah, are. A so away. yeah, but it's fine. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. Let us know in the comments what you think about a win total for the year. Um, oh, you know, boy. last year was a little different too because we had to factor in COVID protocols and if mm-hmm. they were going to get shut down. If they were even going to play all their games, right? Yeah. So I'm hoping that they are. Yeah. I haven't heard anything about spring training games not being played at all this year. Um, yeah, they've been pretty good. I don't think any spring training games. I, I saw the Houston Astros as a team went to go get vaccinated today. 
So that's a positive sign. Really? Yeah. The whole team went to go get vaccinated. That's what I, I heard about a college. I don't know what college it is. Maybe Rutgers or something like that, mm -hmm. where to come back to school in September, you have to get the vaccine. I really think, honestly, and I, I actually made an appointment today. My first shot is going to be Friday. I'm very excited. Like t like this week? This week. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I was able, Tara helped me out. She goes on CVS.com every morning and just finds appointments. She was like, there's one. Do you want it? I was like, yes. Um, so I'm getting vaccinated on Friday. Um, but I, and I'm doing it mostly because, well, one, I trust science, but two, I also just feel like eventually it's going to be mandated, like to do things, you're going to have to be vaccinated. Yeah. So, I think they could tell anyone they have to get it. I know, but I'm just thinking about places. like, like right, they're right. like to be enrolled in public school, you need certain vaccinations. You know, I feel like right. it's, it's going to be that kind of thing eventually, maybe not soon, but I feel like that's the road that's headed. So I might as well get ahead of it, get vaccinated, feel safer. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and well, the Houston Astros. Of opening day, uh, you know, in vaccinations, I don't know if people, you know, happen to miss this or not, but mm -hmm. you have to either have the vaccine, have both shots of your vaccine or the PCR test. You have to have a ne a, a, an electronic proof of a negative PCR test. I don't even know what PCR test is. That's when the nasal swab where they put it up okay. your nose. And then they and... got the rapid one too, which yeah. is like you can get done that morning. So the games at, uh, one. Mm -hmm. So I guess Kelly and I are just going to drop Amelia off to school and then go get the rapid test and then go to the. Well, to I don't know if they'll let you in with a rapid. I think you need the PCR. No, no, you can do it. They, they put up something over the weekend. There was three ways to get in mm -hmm. the vaccination and full vaccination, uh -huh. the PCR or the rapid. Oh, within either six or. Six hours of the game. Okay. So you can't that's, it, yeah, that's kind of hard. You can't get it on Wednesday mm -hmm. and then go to the game on Thursday. You right. Get it that morning. So that's our plan. Thursday Oof. morning, go to City MD. It's going to be a hectic morning. Yeah. Because uh, the there are still lines out the door when I pass City, City MDs. Like, probably now because people know that they need to, like, to do the things. Holidays, yeah. They, they, like around the block. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of laid, laid off a little bit. But now it seems like now that people need them to go do stuff. Yeah. Everyone's got to go get tested. So that's the plan. I don't know if I know anyone that could be like, hey, I'll Ooh. make your special appointment. Come on in. I, I think <laughs> there are certain I'm, I'm pretty sure because I get ever since the started, I've been getting like I joined like the city MDs like email subscribe list. And I'm pretty sure there is a way to schedule appointments for COVID tests now. Oh, really? I, uh, I think if great. you look into I would do it, the PCR like a couple days before. Yeah. And just bring that with me. Honestly, I think that's your safest bet is to do that. The only risky part about it is if you get your results back in time. Because like in my experience, it takes like four days to come back. Oh, I don't well. know if it's faster now. But... See, I don't want to I don't want to put this out in the universe and, yeah. and say that the, the Mets are going to do this because I have absolutely no knowledge of this uh -huh. at all. But I have a very hard time believing that when fans show up on Thursday the 8th, mm -hmm. if they don't have any of those things, that there's not going to be like a rapid test thing there. I, you know what? I, I thought that they too. probably don't want to promote that because everyone's going to do everyone's going to do it. But I feel like as a backup, mm -hmm. if you get there and you're like, you know, I have my vaccination card and I forgot to bring it. What can I do? I just think it makes Which so I much think those vaccination cards are kind of fugazi anyway. Can anyone just like Photoshop that? I don't know. It's a piece of paper. Well, you have to handwrite on it. It's like so, done with a pen. So you, I guess if you I just get one now. of those. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going. To, I know. I know. I don't know. It's a piece of paper with someone at the pharmacy's like scribble on it it's not stamped there's yeah. no hologram there's nothing and that's again and this is why this whole thing with fans being back at ballparks is going to be so risky and you need to just trust that people are going to be responsible because this has the potential to be the start of the world going back to normal and mm -hmm. whatever or the start of a huge spike, a huge wave, because you're getting people together by the thousands who are circumventing the rules so they can watch grown men in pajamas, play, which I love to watch grown men in pajamas play baseball. I'm not belittling that. Yeah. But to circumvent the rules enforced by the CDC to do that is very silly when you can just watch on your couch if you don't want to follow the rules. So if you want the world to go back to normal, if you want to go back to ballparks without rules and needing to get tested, just follow them now. And you won't have to do it forever. But yep. if you don't follow them now, you will have to do it forever. So I'm very passionate about this. Uh, checking <sighs> in here in the comments, we got Jim Bork, who is very excited about the Tampa outing. I think he's down in Tampa now. We did talk about this. Oh, did um, you make a decision about I that? I haven't made a decision mm. yet. But every day that passes by, I feel more and more like we're not going to go. Yeah. Because I, I haven't think it's heard, just risky. Not even that. I haven't heard anything. I kind of I didn't want to put too much pressure on the Rays. Yeah. But I kind of put it a little bit of pressure on them being like, if we don't know kind of soon when we can't come and I don't expect, I'm not asking them to bend rules for us. I'm not asking for any special treatment, right. but um, a group of our size, 
we're not like a local school down the block yeah. where we can just decide on a whim to go to a game you gotta and get rent flights. the bus, you know? Uh, yeah. Oh my God. Do you want to know what I heard? Not to cut you off, but. So I don't know yet, Jim. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Erica, my roommate, her grandparents just went down to Florida. They're staying there for a while. The cheapest rental car you can get in Florida for a week is $1,300 for a week because all of the rental car companies during COVID sold all their cars because they were going out of business. Wow. So if you're going to Florida, that's another thing to consider. If you need a car, it's going to cost you $1,300 to keep one for a week. So something else you have to consider when sending a bunch of New Yorkers down we to Florida. Rent. We always do Ubers and stuff. Yeah. I haven't been in an Uber in over a year. That's what I'm saying is a lot of people want to do rental cars because it feels safer. Yeah. But the rental car companies don't have rental cars anymore. They sold them all this past year. So wow. Something to consider, an additional expense, but so that's another strike on the. <laughs> like, <all laughs> Sorry, <right>. Jim. Honestly, <laughs> Not like, to ruin your day. <laughs> we the out and people might it might think it's just like oh, you, who, how could it be that hard? You just put them on the website. My job of doing the outing stuff it. I'm not looking for a pat on the back, but no, it's a but lot, it's a of, lot work. of work. It's a so, lot like, of work. Planning all the stuff, calling the teams, getting the schedules done, getting the website ready, making the t-shirts, you know, every and Megan here and Lizzie and yeah. shipping the stuff out. It's it's a lot of work. A lot of work for three people. So yeah, for a small operation. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Give them some freaking give them a break with the Mercury and, Mets hats. They're doing their best. <laughs> and Jim just called you out and said that's not true about Jim, the cars. Um so did Dylan. Dylan says that's not true. So okay. I was I was looking at the rental car companies with so Erica, it's so funny because my roommate Erica is the rental car wizard in that every time we go down to Port St. Lucie, we always ask her to do it because she finds the cheapest. So when her grandparents said that they're like, there's she's like, there's no way. And she was looking and she could not find for a week for her grandparents in the town that they were in anything cheaper than $1,300. So That's crazy. maybe where you are, I don't, I also don't know when the last time these people tried to get a rental car for a week actually is. Uh, I'm not, I'm not right, saying you're go, wrong. I, I work for a rental company. Oh, amazing. Can confirm shortages in Florida. Thank you. So that's from uh, MJ DeZenzo on Twitter. So thank you. MJ. Confirmed for you. Um, speaking of outings, I'm sorry, Jim. I know you want us to go. I, I would love for everyone to go. I'm not trying to kill it. I just needed to point it out. You've been to a lot of outings, right? I have. I've been to a bunch. So how many do you think? Oh my God. I don't know. How many outing t-shirts do you have? So many that I, I don't know what to do with them anymore. All right. Well, we have something that you could do with them because Ooh! Project Repat is now a, a new partner of ours. They're going to be with us all season long. And if you don't know what Project Repat is, Project Repat is. You're having a stroke Instagram. today. You know what it is? I started taking the Zupu. <laughs> and I feel like my insides are being really weird and not to mess this up for Project Repat. But I feel weird. I'm getting, My mouth is dry. I don't know. We'll so, return to this after we're done with this. So let me start over. <laughs> okay. If you have a whole bunch of outing shirts or you've been shopping with, with us over the years, we've sold thousands of t-shirts over the years. Yes. Project Repat USA gives you a great option to uh, make a quilt out of your old T-shirt. This is like the partnership of dreams. This makes so much sense. It's not. It's even amazing. Funny. We sell T-shirts. They do something with T-shirts. They have over five hundred thousand happy customers, and uh, they've been making T-shirt quilts since two thousand and twelve. So awesome. they are made in North Carolina and Texas. It's very very easy to do. You go to their website, which is projectrepat.com, and I'll get to that in a second. You select which T-shirts you want. You show them the pattern. You tell them what size you want. So cool. They cut them all out. They sew them all together. And uh, check out this one. This oh, is from, look at that. Um, Kevin uh, out in Cali, who we talked about. Uh, yes, rides his yes, bike a the lot. bike person. Yes, he made this one out of a bunch of you know. So it's, cool. And it's cool too. You don't have to just use T-shirts. He's got some good in jerseys yeah. here. Um, the jersey from 2019 there. The uh, the kid. The, oh, that Matt the Harvey guys, shirt. I remember that one. Oh, yeah, the Matt Harvey yeah. shirt. Cespedes. So if you have shirts and and probably Kevin too, he lost a bunch of weight because yeah. he's been riding his bike. Mm -hmm. um, shirts so that don't fit anymore. Fit anymore. He mm -hmm. turned them into a quilt. So smart. so what they are doing, which is really really cool, if you go to their Instagram. Sorry, let me pull that back up. And you go to Project Repat USA, follow their account, mm -hmm. and make sure you have a Mets related photo in your as your default photo. Uh -huh. They're going to scroll through all the new followers that have Mets stuff on. And once a month, select a winner to get a, a free quilt. Whoa. Awesome. That's awesome. So I just followed them now. I actually, I'm surprised I wasn't already following them, but uh, follow their account. That's they have so a ton cool. of followers too. So the way they're going to do it is from anyone like today on. Yeah. Because they stay in order. Sure. I don't know if you could see them on order when you go to someone's, but we can see it. In, okay. The I haven't checked. holder can check in order of who follows the page. Oh. So they're going to check it out. Follow them. Project Repat USA on Instagram. 
If you don't have Instagram, you may as well sign up for one just for just this. Just to do this. Just make sure your your photos some like Mets related. So cool. Um, but let me pull this up here. And what a great gift too. Like if you have like a significant other oh, or yeah. something or a family member who has a bowl has a bunch, like so cool. Absolutely. So uh also go to their site and check it out. So projectrepat.com. Um you can choose your quilt size and you're looking here if you're watching live mm -hmm. you can decide if you want a lap size a twin size a full size a large throw a queen size That's awesome. you send them the t-shirts they sew them all up and mail it back i'm sure it probably takes a couple of weeks it's probably a lot of work um and the cool thing is here too on their website says made in america made in america with dignity project repat t-shirt quilts are made in america uh by workers earning a fair and living wage so shout out to them very very cool stuff Happy to have them on board. I'm sending them. I'm going to go through after the show. Uh -huh. It's on my to-do list with some <laughs> other things to do. Uh, we have boxes of all the old outing shirts. So Ooh. I'm going to pull one. I might pick only outings that we won. Okay. So like, How many can you put in a quilt? Well, well it depends on the size of the quilt. So okay. the lap one is the smallest one. You should one. do like an NL quilt and an AL quilt. I don't think we've there's enough, enough AL quilts. How AL, many do you have left? We only parts. have one left for National League. So once we go to LA, okay. we'll be done. Um for AL, we had a few Seattle, mm -hmm. Yankees, Baltimore. Right. Um, Who else? I don't know where else. <laughs> I don't know. But a bunch of bunch of them. Yeah. But um, we were supposed to go to Oakland last year. That obviously got canceled. We were supposed to go to LA. That got mm. canceled. But um, I might make one in like one of these walls, maybe like behind you or something. Ooh. We'll we'll hang it up like the lap size one, That'll which be would be cool. cool. I'm just there's so even if you don't use it for seven line shirts, like there's so many things you could do with that. Like if you like, I'm I'm thinking of like like my oh, brother, Kansas City, Kansas City. Oh, sorry. Kansas City. I think like my brother used to play baseball. He has so many old like Smithtown Bulls T-shirts. So like Most make a quilt out run, of that. Like runners, yeah, like, like the event shirts for the charity. Yeah, walks, or if you had like something that. like uh, someone close to you like passed away or something, you have a bunch of T-shirts that obviously you don't want to get rid of. Like that would be amazing amazing to have as like a quilt there's oh i love it so many options yeah absolutely so we are running out of time here Crap. and it's funny too because i talked to uh i talked to you on sunday nights or monday mornings like what are we gonna talk about this week obviously like everyone's all jazzed up about lindor and this opening day is gonna be coming in three days but we could fill hours of just, <laughs> just random stuff bullshit. i write the random stuff here just in case i know there's things that we need to fill some space with which was the pills that you have to give your dog <laughs> <laughs> Zupu, which I started the 15 day cleanse last night. Um, Wait, can we spend these last three minutes talking about Zupu? Because it's all I want to do. Let me get to the winners because <laughs> oh, I didn't do that. Yes, yet. you have to do that. Naked and Afraid. I watched three episodes last night, and Kelly's like, Why are we watching this? This is stupid. And I'm like, This is harder than Survivor. We yeah. watch Survivor. Yeah, yeah. Naked and Afraid is no joke. No, it's terrifying. Yeah. So, it's Naked awful. and Afraid, and uh, that, that, uh, the Ever Given, the, the boat that was stuck in the canal. I keep seeing it's memes done. about it's out. it. It's out. Is it? Yeah, it came out this morning. Uh, it's, it's, it's unclogged. Yes, we can. They were holding up like hundreds of maybe thousands of deliveries there. Oh my so, God. uh, let's get to the winners though. Yes. If you don't know, and you're just watching this at the end of the show, post, it on your wall. post the show, you can post the replay as well. So if you're listening afterwards, you want in on this, go and share this show and you'll be in the running. Uh, and on Twitter, the winner from last week is S Miller and Y and on Facebook, Michael C powers i will contact you guys i promise i will contact you <laughs> very soon to get some free stuff so share the show right now if you're listening afterwards again you can get involved and if you're listening afterwards on soundcloud itunes google play tune in stitcher all that stuff make sure you subscribe and uh, rate and review and do all that stuff it helps the show tremendously yes sir um, i know i just jammed a whole bunch of stuff there into two minutes or a minute but zupu <laughs> um which they should be sponsoring by now because if this works People are going to do it. We need to recap. If you haven't watched the episode from a couple weeks ago, it was you were watching a YouTube video of who it was some rapper. I was watching. Uh, yeah, correct. I Nas had won a Grammy. Yes. And that morning I was like, I'm going to put Nas, the Nas album. Uh -huh. on. And during the Nas album, like I, I hit like the playlist on uh -huh. YouTube. A ad came up for Zoop. And Darren's whole point was, why was this an ad for this video? Who would get that? And then Darren's like, oh, but I got it. And then I bought it. <laughs> So I started it last night. I, the reason I didn't start it earlier is because I was going to be at the race yes. this weekend. I was like, I don't want to have to run to a bathroom if, right. if the stuff actually works that great. Right. So I took it last night. <laughs> and uh, so far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll update you guys next it week. It apparently inhibits your ability to talk because your mouth My gets mouth dry. My mouth is so dry Okay. Right now. Um, but anyway, next week, Mike Piazza. Come <laughs> on, on that note. <laughs> come on back. It's going to be a fun show. Thank you guys for everything. We are only three days away from real life baseball. Woo and uh, we will catch you guys next Monday. Love you, miss you.
and let's go Mets. Let's go Zupu. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> I can't. Oh, 